Welcome everyone to our exciting discussion on PDFA. During this legal fuel session, we hope to enlighten you as to why it is important for you to create a valid PDFA document when filing electronically through the portal. At a high level, we will also cover how to use PDFA and some helpful information to guide you through the process. Before we get started, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce the session's presenters. Uh, I am Judge Martin Bidwell, uh, and since 2005, I have served as a circuit court judge in the 17th Judicial Circuit in Fort Lauderdale. Since 2012, I have served on the Florida Courts Technology Commission. The Florida Courts Technology Commission is a standing committee of the Florida Supreme Court charged with overseeing, managing, and directing the development and the use of technology within the judicial branch. Next, I would like to introduce the Honorable Karen Rushing. Karen Rushing has been the clerk and comptroller for Sarasota County since 1987. She has been on the Florida Courts e-filing authority, which governs the e-filing portal since its inception in 2010 and currently serves as the chairman of this board. Clerk Rushing has been instrumental in guiding and supporting the use of the portal by all stakeholders, and she has been a longtime and active member of the Florida Courts Technology Commission. Finally, I would introduce to you Carolyn Weber. Carolyn Weber brings a tremendous amount of insight as it relates to PDFA. She has worked with the courts and the clerks, both federal and state, for the past 40 years in a variety of roles. She was instrumental in the design and the implementation of the federal court's e-filing application, and Carolyn designed and developed the electronic filing application for Orange County before the portal was created. She joined the Florida Courts Clerks and Comptrollers the Clerks Association in 2012 as the portal program manager uh, and has helped in the design and the implementation of the Florida Courts e-filing portal. She has her MBA in computer information systems. Now, as I previously mentioned, uh, we hope to now enlighten you as to why it is important for you to create a valid PDFA document when filing electronically through the portal. First and foremost, and after considerable evaluation, the Florida Courts Technology Commission approved the PDFA file format as the preferred file format for documents submitted through the portal. Also, the clerks of court are now required to store documents in a PDFA format in their case maintenance systems. From the perspective of the judiciary, there is tremendous utility in a properly created PDFA because it is a searchable document. This provides the judge the capability to search for specific information within the document, which is especially helpful when working with large documents. It also allows the court to use the copy and paste feature within a document, a feature that is helpful when drafting orders. A PDFA is a clean, crisp document that is fully contained and will be viewable far into the future. Thank you for filing your documents using PDFA. And Clerk Rushing, how does PDFA impact the clerk's office? Thank you, Judge Bidwell. Well, PDFA impacts the clerk's office in a variety of ways. So let me get started from the beginning to give you a little information. The Florida Supreme Court approved PDFA as the document storage format for electronic court documents in June of 2019. The Florida Supreme Court Technology Standards Sections 2.1.2 states, the preferred format for filing is the PDFA format where original document intelligence has been maintained. It is also stated that documents filed through the portal will be provided to the clerk in PDFA format. Clerks are required to store documents as a PDFA in our case maintenance systems. If a document is a properly formatted PDFA, it allows for redaction of confidential information, which is required to be performed by the clerks. Portal monthly reports indicate that 52% of the documents submitted are scanned PDFAs, which render them unsearchable. PDFA documents retain document intelligence and all information necessary to be viewed by any device now and in the future. I would also like to take a moment to encourage all filers to take the time 
to computer generate their documents and use the court approved signature format S slash and the attorney name instead of printing, signing and scanning documents. This is very important. It is difficult to use software to redact a scanned file. There is a risk of hidden text or metadata remaining in the scanned document. So in coordination with this group, our association, the Florida Court Clerks and Comptrollers, helped put together a brief video that I'd like to share. Are you representing yourself in court in the state of Florida? DIY Florida can help. DIY Florida, or Do-It-Yourself Florida, is a free-to-use interactive program used to complete official court forms. It can save you time while helping ensure your documents are filed correctly. DIY Florida uses interview-style questions to lead you through the steps and prepare your forms. Once prepared, you can use the Florida Court's e-filing portal to electronically file your completed forms with your clerk's office. Visit www.myflcourtaccess.com slash authority slash DIY to get started. All right, so you all have heard from Judge Bidwell, Clerk Rushing, about PDFA. Why is PDFA important when you're already filing using a PDF format? Well, the basic reason is the A. And the A is archivability, which means that this document will be able to be viewed 10 years further down the road. And who knows what technology is going to look like then. But PDFs are universal. They're viewable on any device, whether it's a PC or a Mac. It is also a trusted security file format, which cannot be altered without an audit trail or leaving an electronic footprint. Again, it's the archivability and the long-term preservation that we are looking for. These documents must be able to be viewed in any media 10, 15 years down the road. It's also the searchability for terms and words and symbols across the board. It's quick and easy to create your PDFA and it also creates a decreased or smaller file size. The document is self-contained. That is very important. All of the fonts that are embedded within the document so that it doesn't rely on whatever medium you're using to view that document to provide the information it needs to be properly displayed. Everything it needs to be viewed and stored is within the document, so it is viewable on any media. It retains the look and feel of the original document, it's completely searchable if created properly and also available on a mobile device. And finally, it is the required format for the portal approved by the FCTC. The portal was charged with some education responsibility about two and a half years ago. What we had have implemented in the portal is to check each document in your submission for PDFA format compliance. We provide feedback to the filer if the document is not in a proper PDFA format. You will see that on the document page in the portal. There will be a red paragraph that will come up and it will tell you by clicking on the read more link what is wrong with your document, why it is not a PDFA format. We also will provide a link to an online video that explains how to create a PDFA document in that same document page on the portal. There's also an FAQ document in the portal on the news and information section, which is updated frequently to provide more information to better help you to create those proper PDFA documents. The portal PDFA filing responsibility, when a county is able to store a PDFA document in their case maintenance system, the portal will continue to accept Word, PDF, and PDFA document formats. 
we will not provide a PDFA document to the county until they are able to save those documents in their case maintenance system. The portal will not pass a digital signature or a digital notarization, which requires an encryption key. The encryption key process is not supported by the portal. Documents that are filed in an approved PDFA format will be automatically provided to the clerk as originally submitted. Documents that are filed in Word will be converted to an approved PDFA format. And again, once the clerk or the county can accept and store a PDFA document, it will then be provided to them. Documents filed in other searchable PDF formats will be converted to an approved PDFA format. Scan documents will be rasterized, which means it will become a bitmap image or a picture as an approved PDF format. However, it is not searchable, and one of the requirements by the FCTC is that the documents be searchable. So how do you create a PDFA document? The ultimate goal is for all portable document, portal document submissions to be a text-born PDFA. That means that you computer generate your document. You add the S slash, which is the approved signature format by the rules to your document, or you can create a JPEG or a bitmap image of your wet ink signature and apply it on the signature block. Then if you use Word, you can use in the file menu a save as PDF option, or you can use the Acrobat ribbon, which if you have Adobe Acrobat is automatically added to your word processor, and you can directly convert your source file or your document directly to a PDF with just one click of the button. Another important thing to remember when you're creating your PDFA documents is don't use these strange or funky fonts. That's the most frequent error that we get. Because a PDFA document is fully self-contained, it means that all of those all of the font features have to be saved within the document. The preferred fonts that are directly integrated into that PDFA structure are your Times New Roman in all different variations, regular, italic, bold, and bold italic, Courier, and Helvetica. Those are your three standard fonts that should be used because the PDFA conversion tool will automatically store all variations of those fonts completely within that document so that it will be viewable in any menu that it is viewed in. Your electronic signature. We talked a little bit about creating that electronic signature as a bitmap or a JPEG image. And you can do this by writing, taking a piece of paper and writing your wet ink signature, scan that document or that page, and then create that JPEG or bitmap file of your handwritten signature. And then you can embed it in your document before you convert your document to a PDFA. Also, you can use, type your signature into the document using that PDFA accepted font, or you can use electronic signature software. And there is a link here or a website that has a list of the best signature software to be used in these types of documents. So how not to create a PDFA? Scanning. Scanning is simply a picture of the document without regard for any code or text or concern for the contents. It makes it a basically a dead document. There is no usability within your document for links, hyperlinks. And also the scan slash OCR, all that does is 
put a OCR or optical character recognition tool that is a soft piece of software that is basically making a guess as to what the text is. It's 80% accurate at producing an accurate PDFA. So you have a slim chance of getting an accurate document. And again, it is not searchable. And using a digital signature that requires a public key encryption or authentication is again, not acceptable in the PDF documents that are filed electronically through the portal. So a takeaway from this brief, this brief presentation on PDFA is to computer generate all your documents whenever possible. Do not print, sign, and scan. Use your file, save as PDF, PDFA, which is in the file menu of your word processor. Use an approved method of signature. The rules provide for the S slash and your attorney's type name on the signature line. And if you must scan, use a notice of filing with the scan document attached as an exhibit. Remember that if at any point paper is involved, you have failed to meet the portal standards in converting your document to a PDFA format. Thank you, Carolyn. We hope this session has provided helpful information about why and how to use PDFA when filing. I'd like to take a moment to just reiterate the importance of using PDFA and the value it brings to everyone involved in the justice system, attorneys, clerks, judges, and most importantly, the filers. Thank you.